Hello, I'm Dr. Bucardoso from Creative Electron, and today we're going to cover the X-ray inspection of electronic components, including medical devices, PGAs, QFNs, and some others. Dr. Glenn Thomas, our VP of Marketing, will be presenting today. Glenn? Uh, damaged balls. Again, this is the BGA balls at a uh, at a oblique angle view. Um, this one uh, is a tough one as far as what the actual problem may be. That may be a, um, a solder paste issue. It might be a mask issue. Uh, it could be just the application. You maybe your um, you've got some contamination. But essentially, the balls are not. Um, nice and uh, symmetrical you have um, some definitely it even could be a, a process problem with the temperature profile but typically if it was a temperature profile problem you would have a problem with all of the balls so I would say it's probably your solder paste application that caused that issue uh, it looks like uh, it's not a mechanical issue because mechanical issues tend to have very hard edges. They don't have the nice smooth edges that you're seeing. In the blown up image on the top right, you see that you have a very nice smooth transition in there. That's nice solder fillet if you were looking at a QFN, but for a BGA, that's not a very good solder fillet to have. Uh, essentially, if it was a mechanical problem, uh, the part was com the component was compromised prior to putting it on the board. Uh, you would see rough, angular, heavy, straight edges, and you really don't see any of those. Those are all nice and rounded. So that would probably indicate you got a solder paste application problem. Uh, again, bond wires, close up of bond wires. We can look at the connection of the bond wire. Uh, we can look at the termination of the bond wire. We can see if you have too many, too little. Um, if the bond wires are stretched too tight, uh, a lot of times you'll have problems with that. Uh, so, and in, in this case, in the image on the right, you can see that we have some voiding. Um, it's kind of a modeling. And when you look at the square box on the right, you'll see that the image is not a nice shade of gray. It's not a consistent shade of gray. There's some actual variances in the shade of gray. Uh, those aren't per, per, you know, per se voids, but that is the, uh, the, the, the void, the uh, dye material. Um, it's not necessarily a void, but you can see the flow, for lack of a better term, in that uh, based on the modeling that you see in the grayscale. Um, that's one of those subtle things that if you look at enough of them, you can look at it and determine if that's acceptable or if that should be there. In this case, that's a nice looking uh, component. There's not a lot of voiding there. Uh, it's just the modeling of the different heights and different densities of the material. Uh, temperature sensors, that's a big one. Uh, uh, cables are a big one. Uh, any type of um, medical device that uses a temperature probe, uh, a lot of engines in automotive use a uh, thermistors. Uh, they control the uh, temperatures and they control, in some cases, airflow. Uh, so once you encapsulate that uh, the, that wire and that solder bead inside of a stainless steel component. You have no clue on where and what happened. If the um, the wires themselves can touch together, like in this case, or you can actually cause a short or a break in the wires. So um, encapsulated and temperature sensitive probes, uh, they're all easily identified and x-rayed. Uh, in this case, we're doing some automated inspection that gives you uh, point lines and bases for uh, like if you were to take the outer tube and push it into the inner tube uh, if your machinery is out of uh, adjustment you may be pushing that inner tube too far up into the uh, orifice in the outer tube and that would cause a uh, a change in your thermistor values or it would change a or have a problem with, uh, you know, your impedance may change. So there are a lot of different applications where x-ray is key and placement of the product is key. It's key to have it uh, 
inserted in the right depth and how do you uh, make sure that your machinery is doing that. If you tear it back apart once you put it together, uh, it kind of, you know, uh, goes against the grain of shipping product when you're tearing it apart to try to find out what's wrong. Uh, you can do adjustments. Uh, we can even automate the software to the point where if it does look at it and it does see a variance, that it could either send a signal out and adjust the machinery to fix the variance, or it could shut down the machinery completely and stop you from producing 10,000 bad parts. So uh, that's on a case-by-case -case basis. If you bring a product to us and you say we're having this problem, we can look at the software algorithms and determine and help you determine what would work for your facility. Uh, it's true with all x-ray. Uh, typically, it's just a matter of how big the problem is and how... Uh, you know, how automated your uh, assembly process is. Uh, BGAs get a bad rap. Uh, a lot of times I've been at a company and they're complaining about they bought an x-ray machine and they want to x-ray BGAs and they've got a, a, a cart full of broken boards. Uh, they're having all kinds of problems with it. And they're looking at the BGA. They're taking it off. They're putting it back on. They're turning it upside down. They're doing everything possible. They're pushing on the BGA. Um, and you go around and you look at a few things on the board while they're uh, complaining about the BGA not working. And you look and you see that they have a batch of bad capacitors. Or they have another problem on the board, like a simple connector is not actually making connection. Uh, that's a real key. Uh, once a company starts placing BGAs and QFNs and they start, uh, you know, all the problems become the BGA. They uh, go back and they fail to recognize the fact that they're soldering, I don't know, maybe 10,000 solder joints on, an X, on a circuit board. 256 of them are a BGA. Uh, you have a lot of potential for failure, not only in the circuit joints themselves, but in the components. And in this case, the capacitor has a bad solder joint inside the uh, component itself. Uh, no way a visual would work. Uh, electrical test could work, uh, but in the field or under operating temperatures, uh, you could have a failure, and um, it would be an intermittent failure. But I guarantee if you place the BGA on the board, everybody's going to blame that BGA as being the problem and not necessarily a cap at the other end of the board. So... X-rays uh, are invaluable for, for finding uh, components other than BGAs that have problems that are placed on the boards. Thanks, Kalan. If you'd like more information about this topic or anything else related to X-rays, please contact us at 760-752-1192 or uh, check us up online at creativeelectron.com. Thanks. Thanks.